on this week's Vaticano. Celebrate the memory of Cardinal Stefan Wyszynski, Poland's so-called primate of the millennium, 40 years after his death. Learn about his strong devotion to Our Lady and how it became the guiding force behind his priesthood. And discover the profound spiritual and fraternal connection between Wyszynski and the man who would become Pope John Paul II. For this and more, Vaticano starts now. Stefan Wyszynski, later known as the primate of the millennium, was born in the summer of 1901 in a poor village in the Russian partition of what is now Poland. At that time, the Polish state didn't exist. For more than 100 years, Poles lived under the annexation of three countries, Russia, Germany, and Austria. born on the 3rd of August 1901 in Suzela, a little village um, in, Ma in Mazowsze. He was the second of six children born to Julianna and Stanisław Wyszyński. His my father was a parish organist, so children would spend a lot of time playing at the church. They were playing, for example, that Stefan is confessing the Holy Mass or um, confessing the children. His parents were great patriots, very devoted and religious people. They taught him history, his father taught him history, Polish history, it was forbidden by the Russians. Uh, the whole family prayed together in the evenings. Their favorite prayer was the rosary. Stefan always knew he wants to be a priest. So um, he one, uh, one day uh, when he was eight, he got up and he was crying. And he told his mother that he had a dream that he got married and he knows that he is to be the priest. In 1917, young Stefan Wyszynski told his father he wanted to become a priest. Stanisław Wyszynski was not enthusiastic about the idea and asked Stefan if he realized how difficult it would be. Stefan Wyszynski was ordained to the priesthood alone on 3rd August 1924 in Chapel of Mother of God in Wrocław Cathedral. A sacristan, seeing a young priest coming for ordination, said that with this poor health, he should rather go to a cemetery than to ordination. From the very beginning, Stefan led the life of an ordinary priest, inviting Mother Mary to be with him at every Mass. After becoming priest, Stefan Wyszynski was ordinated as a vicar to Włocławe Cathedral. He also worked in a factory school and taught children. After one year, he was sent to, uh, to Lublin Catholic University for further studies. There, he met a priest, Władysław Korniłowicz, who became his spiritual guide. When Second World War started, he worked in Wrocławek Seminary and uh, forced to escape with alums from Nazis. While working there, he was placed on the Germans' watch list as a seminary professor and editor of Catholic magazines. To protect Wyszynski's life, the bishop ordered him to leave Wodzwawe and eventually in Laski. Small town Laski, close to Warsaw, was an important chapter of war life of priest Dr. Wyszynski. He was a chaplain in Franciscan Sisters Servant of the Cross and also soldiers' hospital during Warsaw Uprising. In Laski, he also met Maria Okońska, 
She came to Dr. Wyszyński with a few girls who wanted him to teach them about Catholic social science. This wartime meeting established the foundations for a profound lifelong friendship. After this meeting, Maria Okońska was sure that this priest would be someone special in their lives, but not only for them, but also for, whole uh, for the whole Poland. Later, priest Wyszyński became a spiritual father and uh, also co-founder of Secular Institute for Women, devoted to Mother Mary, now known as Primate Wyszyński Institute. Cardinal Stefan Wyszynski served as a bishop from 1946 until his death in 1981. According to the historian Professor Paweł Skibinski, this was an extremely difficult time for the church in Poland. It means that it, it's uh, the same uh, period as uh, the Soviet domination in uh, Poland and uh, the, um, also it's the time of uh, totalitarian government which ambition was uh, the, uh, some kind of laicization and atheization of Polish society. It was a time of great struggle for the Polish people against evil and enslavement and Cardinal Wyszynski became the principal defender of the Polish identity and religious liberty. Pope Pius XII appointed Wyszynski bishop a year after the Second World War. He was the youngest bishop in Poland, and he was impressive. So, uh, in uh, Lublin, he started his uh, uh, service as the uh, ordinary uh, uh, bishop and the chief of the he, he, and he started the uh, uh, ambitious uh, uh, pastoral programs. And his ministry continued to grow. In 1949, Wyszynski was named the primate of Poland and the bishop of Warsaw in Goniecno, the historical capital of the Polish church. He was the youngest member of Polish Episcopate, so uh, his situation w w was very difficult because uh, his uh, um, uh, authority was really, uh, in the first years, really weak. In 1950, Wyszynski negotiated a modus vivendi, an agreement between the communist government and the Catholic Church to help mediate the church-state relationship. It was uh, uh, really uh, difficult to understand uh, for Rome, for uh, Pope and the Secretary of State in, in the Vatican. Uh, so in 1950, Wyszyński paradoxically was uh, suspicious uh, as a formal cooperator of communists, but his intentions were, were different. He tried to uh, make new situation for Polish church uh, to make the situation of uh, some kind of uh, coexistence with uh, enemy uh, and uh, with uh, 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 aggressive communist state and uh, his intention was clarified in, 1930, uh, in 1953. That year he published the pastoral letter known in Poland as Non Posumus, we can't permit it. It means that uh, uh, Wyszyński in, uh, and the Polish bishop, bishops couldn't accept the some kind of intervention of uh, communist state in the internal affairs of, uh, of, uh, of the church. His protest was really clear and well heard in the whole society. In this situation, the government couldn't have any other possibility than arrest 
Wyszyński. Wyszyński's time in prison wasn't only a period of inner prayer. but also a time in which he thought out pastoral plans for the entire Polish church for the next 20 to 30 years. So-called the great Nowen is uh, some kind of uh, uh, great, ambitious pastoral program for the Polish church during the years 1957-1965. The pastoral program which had very clear aims. It means, first of all, the moral reconstruction after the destruction of the uh, moral destruction of the Second World War, the enforcing of uh, you know, Polish integr in, in moral integrity against the program of atheization made by communist country, and also uh, the reintegration of Polish uh, um, uh, identity among the uh, against the uh, domination of Soviet Union. The next phase of Wyszynski's program was the millennium of the baptism of Poland. The two phases greatly revitalized and strengthened the church. It's really amazing that uh, the Cardinal Wyszynski was able to realize this, ki this kind of great uh, uh, pastoral activities without uh, media, without uh, uh, social uh, structures, only in the base of uh, parochial, uh, uh, parochial structures and diocesial structures. These programs were accompanied by the development of Marian devotion in Poland, especially to Our Lady of Czestochowa, Queen of Poland. A copy of this famous image of Mary went on pilgrimage from one parish to the next, and the reaction of the communist authorities was surprising. They uh, decided to arrest uh, the holy picture. It's strange because in Marxist uh, mentality, the holy picture is nothing. So uh, it's really uh, amazing and some kind of uh, uh, comic situation, but really seriously uh, treated by the Polish authorities. The communist shocking response seemed to prove Primate Wyszynski's effectiveness in communicating and defending the church in Poland. After the break, learn about Cardinal Wyszynski's deep reverence for Our Lady and how she helped him to lead the church during communism. You can't understand Cardinal Stefan Wyszynski without the Mother of God. His family had a special love for two Marian images, Our Lady of the Gate of Dawn in Vilnius and the Black Madonna of Czestochowa. When Wyszynski's mother died when he was nine years old, he chose another mother, one who would never die. A special place close to his heart was the shrine of Our Lady, Queen of Poland, at Jasna Gura. 
Actually, he celebrated his first Mass at this shrine. Afterwards, he explained that he'd asked Mary that she would always be present at his very first Mass and at every Mass that he would celebrate. He then was ordained a bishop at Yasnagura. He was there so often that he had even his apartment there. Mary became the most important person for Cardinal Wyszynski, not only in his spiritual life, but in his everyday life as well. Probably some of us could have, uh, could have seen a photo of uh, Cardinal Wyszynski uh, when he holds in his arm uh, the icon of uh, Mother of God, uh, of Jasna Góra, but a special one the one where you can see only the, the head of, of the Mary. And what does it mean? Cardinal Wyszyński was particularly devoted to, to Madonna, to, 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 to Mary, we, we already know it. And he wanted to take her everywhere he went. Uh, he took this uh, image even to the Concilium Vaticanum Secundum, to the Concil Vaticanum Secundum, um, everywhere he went uh, throughout the world. The devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary was something he had in common with Cardinal Karol Wojtyła, who later became Pope John Paul II. Pope had the motto, totus tuus, which means, I am all yours, and he addressed these words to Mary. And Cardinal Wyszynski used to say very often, I entrusted everything to Mary. The essence of this devotion is total surrender to Jesus by entrusting oneself to Mother Mary, who leads all people to her son. Primate Wyszynski didn't keep his relationship with Mary to himself, rather he spread this devotion far and wide throughout Poland. In this difficult period of communism, he saw Mary as the only person who can unite the Poles and free our nation from the wave of atheization. Cardinal Wyszynski started the journey of the copy of the icon of the Blessed Virgin Mary of Jasna Góra in Poland. This icon was on the pilgrimage in all Polish parishes. It went from parish to parish all over Poland. At those celebrations, almost all the people that lived in the visited parish were present. In fact, in his heart, Cardinal Wyszynski carried a vivid memory of the words of Cardinal Chlond, who foretold this with significant words, but victory, if it comes, will be the victory of the Blessed Virgin Mary. However, the devotion didn't end with the pilgrimage. The Cardinal wanted the whole church to experience Mary's crucial role in the spiritual struggle for salvation. He trusted as well the fact that the faith was saved in Poland, that nevertheless the communism was uh, like uh, um, belligerent in, in that year in Poland. And he wanted to share with other uh, countries, with other bishops, actually all Polish bishops, uh, wanted to share our experience with entire church. And during uh, Council of Vaticanum Secundum, a uh, Polish bishop proposed to proclamate uh, Mother of God as Mother of Church. And uh, at the end of this Council, uh, Pope uh, Paul VI uh, proclamated Mary as Mother of Church. And on the first feast of the Immaculate Conception in 1975, Pope Paul VI entrusted the entire world to Our Lady, 
fulfilling the wishes of the Polish bishops. When we return, we uncover a profound and spiritual relationship between Cardinal Stefan Wyszynski and Cardinal Karol Wojtyła. Stefan Wyszynski's Marian Crusade for Poland was aided by his profound spiritual relationship with Karol Wojtyła. Historians argue it wasn't only a friendship, but a true father-son relationship. During almost all life of Cardinal Wyszynski, the father was Wyszynski and the son was Wojtyła. But this relationship drastically changed one day. But from 16 October of, of 1978, from the moment of uh, designation of Wojtyła to the papal uh, capital in, uh, in uh, Rome, uh, the situation was immediately changed. The father was Wojtyła and the son was Wyszyński. It's really strange, but it was possible that this relationship changed so so simple, so natural. For Wyszynski and Wojtyła, faith truly came first, and they knew how to use their talents in the service of the church. Wojtyła was the principal uh, foreign ambassador of Polish church. Uh, his capa capa uh, really unique capacity for f uh, foreign languages. Uh, his uh, uh, great intellectual scale, uh, his uh, really amazing possibility to make new contacts with people. It was a natural uh, reasons for made him uh, this kind of informal ambassador of the, of the Polish church. In 1978, Pope John Paul II told Cardinal Stefan Wyszynski, there wouldn't have been this Polish Pope on the Sea of Peter if it hadn't been for your faith, not retreating from prison and suffering, your heroic hope, you're entrusting yourself completely to the Mother of the Church. I agree that uh, the um, uh, activity of uh, Cardinal Wyszynski was the uh, uh, condition of uh, election of Saint uh, John Paul II. First of all, because uh, without Wyszynski, the experience of Polish church couldn't be so known in the whole Catholic world. Uh, the uh, example of Wyszynski was clear for the every conscious Catholic in, in the world. It, he was a martyr of uh, uh, anti-communist defense of uh, religious freedom in this Eastern Europe. Taki zbawczy wstyd, żeby zobaczyć człowiek w całej prawdzie. Potrzebny jest. But there was something else. Wojtyła saw himself as a disciple of Wyszynski. The great pastoral programs by Wyszyński uh, was, uh, were really uh, inspiration for Wojtyła. When we are thinking about the great pastoral programs by Wojtyła, for example, I don't know, uh, the World Youth Days or the World, uh, the, the world uh, uh, Family Meetings, it's some kind of realization, inspiration, uh, made by Wyszyński during millennium of uh, Polish baptism. The deep 
relationship between the two Polish church leaders became evident in 1981 when Ali Aksha tried to assassinate John Paul II in St. Peter's Square in Rome and Cardinal Wyszynski lay dying in Warsaw. In the uh, most dramatic uh, moment of dismay, the both principal moral authorities of the Poles uh, were under uh, danger of uh, death. So uh, in the crucial moment, Cardinal Wyszyński asked the whole so society of Polish Catholics to pray in the intention of Pope, not in the intention of primate of Poland. The final public words of Primate Wyszynski highlighted his deep love and respect for his fellow countrymen. With his call to prayer for the ailing Pope, Wyszynski passed the torch to John Paul II to lead the church into the new millennium.